we had a, like enough comments asking us to watch the lore episodes that Blizzard made. So Blizzard yeah. made some. They were tired of all my questions, and I understand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So basically what we're going to do here is we're going to watch the Book of Lorath. There's four episodes. Okay. And then we're going to catch up on the history of Diablo. I guess it takes us through ancient history and then through the first three games as well. Oh. Diablo 1, 2, and 3. Well, isn't this six? Uh, uh, this is four. Oh, yeah. yeah. IV. And so, yeah. so if you want to skip this, you guys, just I'm going to put a thing on the thing above, and uh, uh, you can click that to just to go next to the next section of playthrough. Um, but we're going to watch the lore, and we'll react to it, and let's see. Mm, Pacific Cooler is definitely better than what? Berry Rapids. I've never tried this. <laughs> but, yes, Candace is a child. <laughs> if in case anyone was wondering. <laughs> okay. Let's see. So anyone that likes Travel the is long a way to be disappointed, young scholar. Life has taught me well that evil is inevitable and can never be truly destroyed. It can be banished. It can be thwarted. It can be driven back. But only for a time. So Lorath is the hermit. Men are weak. He is telling evil the story. Is seductive. And those who would do nothing in the face of malevolence are cowards. Never you seek a weapon against the darkness rising in Sanctuary. The only thing I can arm you with is knowledge. So when evil finds a foothold and flourishes once again, at least I can say it was not due to ignorance. The Book of Lorath. Oh, and For Lorath untold is the eons, hermit. Yes. an eternal conflict has raged between the demonic hordes of the Burning Hells and the angelic host of the High Heavens. Scholars have spilled gallons of ink and spent their eyesight in dim scriptoriums, writing and debating how these two factions began and what came before them, before us. It is said the first being, Anu, was the sum of all things, good and evil, light and dark, physical and mystical, joy and sadness, the one. Anu wished to be free from the malignance of evil and so separated and expelled the darkness within. But what is cast off does not simply disappear. And that darkness found its shape in the seven-headed dragon, Tathamat, the prime evil, who fought ceaselessly with Anu to their mutual destruction. Dang. It is said, when the remains of these two titans settled, the universe as we know it came into existence. All the realms of the high heavens, the burning hells, and pandemonium. Tathamet's blackened house gave birth to I the think burning tell hells, us. and each of the seven heads transformed into the seven great evils, each with dominion over their own realm. The three most dominant of these inherited the title of prime evil, feeding off one another to maintain dominion and rule over the legions of the burning hells. Can you hells. pause it really quick? Mm -hmm. There was Mephisto. So, as soon as they're going to start talking about seven different names. Yeah. I can't keep that all in my head. Okay. But I'm going to go ahead and say um, Lilith is the daughter of hatred. One of these seven things is hatred. Well, there, Mephisto, the lord of hatred, they're about to tell you. Okay. And then seven is kind of like, I think, the seven deadly sins. Yeah. So. Is hatred a deadly sin? Um, wrath, I think, is the same thing. Maybe not. I don't know. Well, I guess we'll have to see it. Yeah. Um, maybe spite. I don't know. Uh, we'll just, you know, it's yeah. loose. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So we got Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred. Lord of Hatred. Intelligent and cunning. Father of Lucian and Lilith. The mother of Sanctuary. Got Bay, it. Lord of Destruction. Corrupter of the World Storm. And Diablo. Lord of Terror. Mm. As Deckard Cain once wrote... For as long as man fears the dark, Diablo will remain the most insidious and, I would argue, the most powerful of all the evils. The four lesser evils, no less dangerous to the people of Sanctuary, are not to be discounted on the basis of their title. Underestimating their capabilities and intentions is a sure path to our destruction. Belial, Lord of Lies, 
uses poisonous untruths to create an ever darker, fractious world. Juriel, Lord of Pain, revels in the cacophonous screams of those in physical agony. Yeesh. I'm Even terrified. demons are no stranger to his torment. Oh my. And Ariel, the maiden of anguish, is the counterpart of nice Duril. Groups, though. <laughs> whereas he delights in bodily torment. Dangerous. And Ariel derives pleasure from anguish of the mind and soul. Wait, that last one? Who? And Ariel, yeah. Oh, this the guy? Lord the boobs sin. lady. Oh, oh, oh. A clever man. No, the, the boobs lady likes to torment the mind. Hmm. Whereas Duriel likes to torment the body. Hmm. And then we've got Asmodan here. Manipulator and master of temptation. Loves vice in all its forms. But revels most in the failures of others. Dang. Demonic hordes spawn from the vile cavities of the burning hells. A host of ravenous, furious monstrosities that reflected the poisonous elements of their progenitor. So there are demons beyond counting in the burning hells. So that's how, who rules hell and who lives At the in hell. center of the high heavens lies the crystal arch. Now we go to heaven. Oh, to okay, can you pause really spine. <sighs> so there was one person. It split in two. There was one the, god. Call I'm, him God. Can I finish? Yeah, there was one. Okay, there was one god. He split in two because he wanted to get rid of the evil. But the evil turned into a seven-headed monster. Mm -hmm. The god and the, the monster. Mm-hmm fought each other yep and then when they died they turned into this like this was the remains so then yeah. the seven heads and that's like the seven <clears throat> bad stuff right yeah one two three four five six seven eight nine ten well one two diablo bale mephisto belial duriel and Ariel, and asmodan are the seven these are the greater evils oh. these are the lesser evils these two those are, are their kids kids yep and then this is the dragon the, the Got monster. It. Okay. Tothamet. And then Anu. Now we're wow, about to see what Lilith Anu looks spawned. like Lilith. Yeah, she does. And the tree here. But so, this whole game's named after Diablo. Yes. So so Diablo is sort of the central figure in most of the games, somehow, some way. And he what is he responsible for? He's like basically Deckard Cain, who's one of the Haradrim. He was the original one to call to help a hero in the first Diablo to go and kill what needed to be killed. Um, he says that Diablo is the most dangerous of all these demons. Yeah, but what was he responsible for? I forgot. Terror. Lord of Terror. So Got fear. It. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, go. When it vibrates in perfect harmony, an angel is created, embodying an aspect of what Anu had once been. The purest of these become archangels, and five rows above the rest to lead the host of the high heavens. Imperius, Archangel of Valor, a brilliant tactician who commanded the warriors of heaven and led them into battle with hell, but whose pride has led to much destruction. Tyrael, former Archangel of Justice, who abandoned his rigid dedication to justice and took up the aspect of wisdom instead. He supported the many causes of humanity. He abandoned renounced justice? his angelic nature in favor of wisdom and fell to earth as a mortal. Sanctuary would have fallen to darkness long ago without his aid. He fell to the world. Anarius, yeah, he's a human creator now. of sanctuary, served but There's Anarius. And was an advisor to the council. Served under Tyrael. Until he rebelled. Oriel, the Archangel of Hope, who embodies the shining light of a bright future and sees the potential for good in all things. But who is no less a warrior than the others. Oriel dispatching those nice. who spread despair and darkness. <clears throat> she is said to lead the chorus of the high heavens in harmony. Ethereal, the archangel of fate, who comprehends the tangled web of fate and time. Though the future of humanity remains obscure to him, unseeable, because we are not of the natural order of creation. Malthael, the former Archangel of Wisdom, who fell to darkness and brought ruin to Sanctuary when he abandoned the aspect of Wisdom and took up the aspect of death. So shouldn't he go on the other side? Long ago, and Still barely an escaped with my life. Few who met him after his transformation survived. After all, no one can stop death. 
These five archangels formed the Anjurus Council and ruled heaven in harmony <coughs> until Malthael abandoned heaven. The council fell to confusion and dissension. Wow, and this is a cool tree. Minutes. I should print it out because then they say these names. Alongside heaven and hell. I'll know if they're on the good side or bad side. Round. I won't know what they said because no one could ever remember all that. And ends, <laughs> where Anu and Tathamad slew one another. Okay, where Anu. The violence scarred, violence scarred the cosmos. Scarred the cosmos. And birthed the plane of Pandemonium. So that's Pandemonium. It was here the World Stone, also called the Eye of Anu, came to rest. A mountain sized artifact of infinite power that embodied the endless cycles of birth and death, destruction and creation. Desire to control its infinite power fueled the eternal conflict until Inarius and Lilith stole it and used it to create sanctuary. The hour grows late. The fire is dying and the cold is unrelated. Wait, what did he say about the very end when Lilith and whoever out. stole something? And I'll tell you the tale of What did they creation. steal to create sanctuary? I think they're going to uh, tell pandemonium? us. Lilith so, Inarius, oh. mother and Yeah, he's going to tell us how sanctuary was created in the next video. The long, bloody history of oh. the eternal conflict. So, if pandemonium. If he just being, speaks in a, not such a low tone, maybe I can hear him more. are not as dark as mine. <laughs> you can read it too. Okay, I think we oh, all they didn't know even have me linked skills. to the next video. Oh, there we go. Episode two. Yeah. Okay. You've returned. <laughs> and with Ale this time. A wise choice for this dark story. I wish. <laughs> the shadows will seem longer when it's dark. your Capri Sun. <laughs> Before we talk to Vanu and Tathamet, the high heavens and the burning hells, and all who reside there, embroiled in the eternal conflict. Now let us speak of the creation of Sanctuary and our creators, Inarius and Lilith, Angel and Demon, our father and mother. The eternal conflict raged on, endless and all-consuming. Led by the Angiris Council, the angelic forces fought countless battles against the armies of the seven demon lords who sought to conquer all of creation. Though the high heavens often defeated their adversaries, they also failed to destroy them, allowing evil to return again and again and again, ceaseless, unrelenting. Both sides claimed victories, both suffered crippling defeats. The conflict was a never-ending slaughter. Many I thought you're redundant. Were fought in pandemonium. <laughs> The plane set to be formed from the violent death of Anu and Tathamad, where the heart of creation lay. Heart of creation. The mountains. So there's three right now without sanctuary. There's three realms mm -hmm. or worlds. Mm -hmm. One is the heavens where the angels live. The other. Oh, I know angels are in heaven. And then you know the hells where the demons live. Correct. So then there's pandemonium. Mm -hmm. Pandemonium is like an in between those two, mm -hmm. and it's the site. Of the dead bodies, which I imagine are massive, of Anu and Tathamet, the dragon. Where they killed each other, that became a world called Pandemonium. So I think it's an in-between, and the angels and demons are fighting over Pandemonium. And in the middle of Pandemonium is the World Stone, this thing with immense power. So that's kind of what they're fighting over, is the power of creation, this World Stone. Okay. Okay. Sized artifact that would come to be known as the World Stone, housed within the Pandemonium Fortress. Wait, what's the World Stone? I'm kidding. Any who control the World Stone. <laughs> I was like, my God. New worlds, <laughs> or unmake them with a thought. A desirable and dangerous prize indeed. It became the focus of the eternal conflict. Over the eons, the Pandemonium Fortress changed hands many times. It became a strange place. Embodying the warped reality of Pandemonium as a whole, a structural and liminal place, affected by the high heavens and burning hells alike. Angels and demons, too numerous to count, have fallen at its gates, over and over and over again. This endless cycle caused Inarius, advisor to the Angiris Council and under Tyriel's command, to eventually conclude that the war could never be won, and he resolved to abandon it. Elsewhere, Lilith, daughter of hatred, 
was arriving at a similar conclusion. On her father Mephisto's role in the eternal conflict, Lilith once wrote, My father is content to fight the same battles and the same foes while everything turns to ashes. The war will never be won so long as he and his brothers lead. There is an end to it, but fools like my father are too blind to see it. Inarius and Lilith, angel and demon. Separated by a vastness in distance and experience that is difficult to comprehend, they came to the same conclusion. They must escape the eternal conflict. I wonder if the cosmos had ever contemplated such an unholy alliance and divine union. Hmm. I wonder if creation shuddered in horror and awe. I mean, Anu was union at the beginning, though. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like, fellow before he split himself, that's how it was, right? Fighting. The details of their meeting, like so much of our history, is obscured by the relentless passage of time and myth. But the great Herodric scholar Deckard Cain we know one thing tells that went us down. that Inarius <laughs> wounded or marooned in the What are you talking fortress, about? Meeting with Lilith. <laughs> Lilith was not spared the hatred of her father Mephisto, and from time immemorial had awaited an opportunity to rebel. Wait, the dad found out? For no, not yet. Time, she just he just was hatred, so he, he she knew. bad dad. Not only yeah. set aside their differences, but also formed a union. It's difficult to imagine, but legends tell us that Inarius and Lilith difficult to imagine. Are you imagining it? That would alter the course of the war, reality itself, and all of existence. Inarius and Lilith pledged themselves to their joint cause of escaping the eternal conflict. United in purpose, both resourceful and wise in their way, they managed to gain control of the world stone Dang. and hide it from the watchful eyes of the heavens and the hells. Working together, they shifted the world stone into a pocket dimension, hiding it from the opposing powers of the eternal conflict. There. They used its extraordinary power to shape a new world. A refuge free from war, free from unending strife. A sanctuary. The renegade angels and demons came together to create new life, and the nature of the eternal conflict changed. The joining of the opposing natures within these firstborn made beings unlike any before beautiful abominations called Nephilim, from which humanity would one day descend as inheritors of both lineages. Dang. The birthrights of the firstborn graced them with the potential to resist the evil of the burning hells and to defy the dominion of the high heavens. Because of this, many of the angels and demons who rebelled with Lilith and Inarius feared what these children might become. The burden of children can strain even the strongest of allies. It really it can. Seems that angels and demons are not immune to this simple truth. Surely, Inarius and Lilith could not have foreseen the cosmic consequences of their actions. Inarius was alarmed when he realized that his children might surpass both angels and demons in potential. The other angels and demons fought fiercely over what should be done, whether to With spare the, the people. Nephilim, or exterminate them. Mm -hmm. The descent oh. between the two groups alarmed Inarius, who called for a period of reflection. Lilith, driven into a mad frenzy by the threat of her children's extinction, ruthlessly murdered each and every renegade angel and demon, leaving only Inarius to discover the carnage she had wrought. Horrified by the loss of his comrades at Lilith's hand, Inarius became enraged. But still, he could not kill Lilith. Instead, he banished her from the sanctuary they had created together. Mm -hmm. Inarius then attuned the world stone to diminish the powers of the Nephilim over time and disappeared in the aftermath. What did he do to the world stone? Their strength though? faded generation by generation. Faded generation uh... by generation. So he, like, he made it so that people wouldn't stay as strong as when they first were made yeah. and would get weaker. They came to resemble mortals, no longer angelic or demonic simply human. As their power diminished, so too did their collective memory, until only legends of what came before remained. It is
is said that the firstborn remained immortal and undying as humankind took shape. Rathma. Giving rise to the cultures, kingdoms, Judith's and tribes son. of sanctuary before themselves fading into myth. I mean, Lilith. <laughs> Judith. <laughs> now you know. The birth of our world and our inheritance. Okay. That's Demonic wild. Divine. So we haven't even gotten to the first Eternal Diablo yet. The first game. This is just backstory. Yeah. Think on that, young scholar, until we meet again. None of us is above sin or immune to evil seduction. Even the most righteous may fall, given the right push in the wrong direction. So probably we'll get to the first Diablo game story in the next episode here. Yeah. This is the first game. Another Hold on, night, but and you yeah. more ale. But they just made Stronger these stuff this time. To recap and go into Essential the for keeping fourth. Warm here for people like you who are joining the fourth yeah. and don't have any context, I think. And it helps with people who played too, because Tonight, that was all that history we didn't know anything about those first two episodes. Betrayal. This is what we know. And the great blight of destruction. We played the game here. The very fabric of our world. Diablo, the Lord of Terror. When last we spoke, we spoke of Inarius and Lilith, and humankind's creation. How humanity found itself caught by the eternal conflict. A battle that does not belong to humankind, but one we must fight nonetheless. Two rival groups, the Temple of the Triune and the Cathedral of Light, sprang up on the world of Sanctuary and strove to win over the hearts of mankind. The Triune was secretly backed by the three prime evils, Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo, who had discovered Sanctuary's existence. So somehow they Inarius discovered it. secretly founded the Cathedral of Light in response. And Inarius made the Cathedral an attempt to counter their malevolent influence. Oh, the demons found out about Unbeknownst this? Unbeknownst to Apparently. either the Prime Evils or Inarius, Lilith returned to Sanctuary to reawaken her children's dormant powers, knowing they had the ability to banish the agents of the Burning Hells and Inarius for good. Soon after, Sanctuary was engulfed in what would become known as the Sin War, a catastrophic proxy war over the souls of humankind. Humanity won the war, but they faced another kind of battle. The High Heavens, too, became aware of Sanctuary and her blasphemous children, and now deliberated on humanity's ultimate fate. With the Angiris Council split, the Archangel Tyr <coughs> cast the final vote to spare us from extermination. Instead, the memory of all that came before was taken from humankind, including knowledge of their inherited power. In exchange for their part in leaving Sanctuary alone, the Burning Hells took Inarius into their custody, and it is said that he has suffered unending torment at their hands ever since. Well, he's free now. Of course, mm -hmm. it is not the nature of the Burning Hells to leave well enough alone, and before long, more attempts to corrupt humankind were underway. The lesser evils, led by Asmodan and Belial, staged an uprising that upset the established order of the Burning Hells. Convinced the prime evils had abandoned the eternal conflict in favor of corrupting humanity, the usurpers set out to banish the three prime evils to Sanctuary. They lost fully one third of their army, but they succeeded in banishing Mephisto, Baal, and Diablo into the mortal realm in what would come to be known as the Dark Exile. They spent decades spreading terror, hatred, and destruction across the land. It is here that the story of the Haradrim begins. When Tyriel assembled a group of powerful mages and tasked them with humanity's defense, standing fast against the tyranny of the prime evils and guarding against the wrathful eyes of the heavens, falling upon humankind once again. Tyriel carved three soul stones from pieces of the world stone, crystalline prisons designed to contain the malignant essence of a prime evil. Sapphire for Mephisto, Amber for Baal, and Crimson for Diablo. Under Tyriel's guidance, the Haradrim searched across the vastness of Sanctuary for the Lords of Hell, with the aim to contain them. The Haradrim found Mephisto, and after much struggle imprisoned him. The Sapphire Soulstone was given to the Zakarun for safekeeping. They also battled Baal, but in the process the Soulstone intended for him was shattered. The Order's leader, Tal Rasha, trapped Bale's essence in the largest shard of the Amber Soulstone, but feared that was insufficient. 
The Haradrim concluded they could fuse the Shah to a human body in an effort to better contain Bale's power. Tarasha selflessly volunteered his own body to contain the Lord of Destruction's raging essence. Tyriel himself took up the solemn duty of driving the shard into Talrasha's heart. Dang. The grieving Haradrim sealed away their noble leader within a subterranean tomb, believing they were leaving him to suffer torment beyond imagination as he struggled to hold fast the monstrous Lord of Destruction for all of time. Seems like a not a good In plan. the wake of this tragedy, Jared Kane took leadership of the bruised and battered mages. Together, the Haradrim spent nearly 10 years following Diablo's path of terror through Sanctuary, until finally coming to blows and containing him within the Crimson Soulstone. So this is the first game? Diablo's not Soulstone even, not was even carefully yet. hidden deep in a labyrinthian so cave They hid Diablo's the stone Haradrim. in a cave. To guard the great evil hidden in its depths, a Haradric monastery was built atop the caves. The hope, I believe, was that it would never be disturbed and that Diablo would be forgotten in the great below his influence fading with time. But that was not to be. No prison can last forever. So long as a key exists, its door can be opened. The land near that small monastery would eventually be settled, and the quiet, prosperous town of Tristram was founded there. None could have known, <coughs> except perhaps Diablo. This is the first game. The grim fate that would befall the unfortunate souls that called Tristram home. Over time, foreign powers influenced the land, and Tristram became politically significant. At the behest of the Zacharum Church, and guided by Archbishop Lazarus, a Zacharum Lord named Leoric crowned himself King of Candurus and made Tristram his capital. He converted the old Haradric monastery into his seat of power, Sorry. unaware of the threat that lurked beneath. Leoric was wise and just, ushering in an era of peace and prosperity for Tristram. But with time, his outlook darkened, and he grew irrational, his mind slipping towards madness and paranoia. The king began ordering the ex- So I think because his castle was built on top of where Diablo's stone was buried, mm -hmm. that that was corrupting his mind. You yeah, know, he like, started going crazy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Execution well, of any who questioned him. People started calling him the Black King. He declared war on the neighboring kingdom of Westmart, in part thanks to Lazarus's counsel, an unjust and unwinnable war. Leoric's eldest son, Aiden, joined the fight, seeking approval from his father. Shortly after Aiden's departure, Leoric's youngest son, Albrecht, went missing. Leoric tortured and executed many of his own people in his frenzy to find his son. His knights, freshly returned from the war and appalled at the state of their kingdom, were forced to slay the Black King to stop the brutality. Well, that's in an attempt to honor the man he had been, Leoric was given a proper burial in the old catacombs. Aiden too returned to find a kingdom in shambles. Rumors of the horrific happenings in Tristram spread. Okay, so the first Diablo game, you play as Aiden. The Aiden son? is the son. He's the oldest brother. Okay. The king has been killed because he went nuts. You return to the town, and it, everything's kind of in disarray. The king's dead. There's strange happenings underneath whatever. And missing is your younger brother, who is Leoric's other son, who he was trying to find. Mm -hmm. So your younger brother's missing. You are Aiden, who just returned from a war. Mm -hmm. And you're tasked now with like kind of figuring out what's going on now at your home, mm -hmm. right? Um, so it should be telling that story now. So Aiden is the main character of the first Diablo. Mm -hmm. Along with the news of the appearance of demonic creatures and brought adventurers to Tristram. Two such adventurers joined Prince Aiden when he entered the catacombs to find his brother Albra. During this harrowing journey, Aiden was forced to strike down his own father who had been reanimated as a foul entity called the Skeleton King. Yikes. Is that a boss? Continuing on, Aiden soon found Diablo himself. No. After a great battle of fire and steel, the Lord of Terror was defeated. But this ending is not a happy one. For Diablo had twisted young Albrecht's body into his own demonic form. In slaying the demon, Aiden had slain his younger brother. 
distraught, Aiden pulled the soul stone from Albright and plunged it into his own body. In the weeks that followed, Aiden would seek comfort with a local witch named Adria. So now this is Diablo 2, mm. where the character you played in Diablo 1 mm -hmm. becomes the enemy in Diablo 2. Mm. But you're not the enemy? You're not him. Yeah. You're the other adventurers who we'll talk about soon. Slowly succumbing to Diablo's influence, Aiden eventually traveled east from Tristram and became known as the Dark Wanderer, set on liberating Bale and Mephisto. As the Dark Wanderer traveled east, a new group of adventurers That's arrived you, in Tristram. They rescued Deckard Cain from the ruins of Tristram, who implored them to give chase. Soon the party found themselves taking part in a dangerous pursuit of the Lord of Terror. Following the Dark Wanderer's path towards the tomb of Talrasha, the adventurers would face the lesser evils of Andariel and Duriel. So they're all three getting back to together. Mm -hmm. Instead of Talrasha, they discovered Tyriel imprisoned in the tomb. Baal, still using Talrasha as a vessel, had escaped imprisonment to join Diablo in his guise as the Dark Wanderer. Together they had overcome Tyriel and trapped him in the prison he'd made for Baal so long ago. The heroes pressed on to find Mephisto, the Lord of Hatred, deep in the jungles of Kurast. Once more, the heroes were too late to stop Diablo, as he shed what little of Aiden remained, reverting to his monstrous demonic form before returning to the burning hells to rally his demonic legions. Uh -oh. Mephisto remained behind, believing he could defeat the brave pursuers. His confidence was misplaced. The Lord of Hatred was defeated and sealed in the Sapphire Soul Stone. Lilith's mom. I mean, dad. <laughs> the heroes followed the Lord of Terror into the burning hells, thinking only of Sanctuary. Yeah. And not the grim This is the end of the second game. You go into there. hell to fight Diablo. At Tyriel's request, the heroes confronted the corrupted angel Isuel on the Plains of Despair. In slaying him, the heroes freed Isuel's spirit and he informed them that the prime evils knew how to corrupt the soul stones. With this information, Cain sent the heroes to the Hellforge to destroy the Sapphire Soul Stone, in the hopes that this would prevent Mephisto from manifesting in this world ever again. Once there, they had to defeat a demon called Hephasto the Armorer, a towering monstrosity with wide horns. This is in hell. His powerful arms strengthened by thousands and thousands of strikes with his Hellforge hammer against the anvil. After successfully destroying the Sapphire Soulstone, the heroes traveled deep into the wastes of the Burning Hells to face the Lord of Terror himself. They fought a fierce, pitched battle against increasingly dire odds deep in Diablo's own realm. But the heroes fought and defeated Diablo. They pulled the shard from Diablo's head, trapping his essence inside, and returned to the Hellforge to destroy it as well. With this momentous achievement, only Bale remained to threaten Sanctuary. Unfortunately for us, even one prime evil can unleash inconceivable devastation. As the heroes struggled with Diablo in Hell, Bale, Lord of Destruction, set his demonic army on a course to Mount Ariat, annihilating all in his path on the way to his prize, the World Star. Survivor accounts describe the prime evil atop his litter, surveying the barbarian city of Sesheron with ravenous malice and an insatiable lust for carnage. His vision for Sanctuary was a wasteland stained with blood. It is both humbling and horrifying to know how close he was to achieving that goal. Thanks to the bravery of the barbarians in the town of Haragath at the base of Mount Ariat, Bale's army was temporarily repelled, buying time enough for reinforcements and the heroes that had slain Diablo and Mephisto to arrive. They fought their way through Bale's army, up the mountain, and finally into the very heart of Sanctuary, the World Stone Keep. Though our heroes ultimately defeated Bale, they could not stop his poisonous malice from infecting the world stone. Yes. A difficult choice had to be made, and so it was. Tyriel chose to destroy the world stone rather than let it fall to corruption. 
Seems like that was the right choice. He hurled his great sword Eldruin at the world stone, shattering it. Some of its shards fell to earth, imbued with power. The world stone was nearly as large as the mountain that housed it, and its destruction turned the imposing peak of Mount Ariat into nothing more than a vast crater. Local settlements and tribes scattered to the wind, many forced to seek new homes. And it is in this new world, deeply wounded by the treachery of the prime evils, that the next chapter in our history unfolded. Now we go to Diablo 3. The game Diablo 3. The tragic tale of Lear. Diablo's assault on heaven. Diablo's assault on and heaven. And Malthael's betrayal. And why so few of us remain. I played Diablo 3. Take care in the darkness. Okay, There's so more last one up. Out there than the wind. I'm interested to know, yeah, because Diablo 3 was about Diablo 2, but they I thought Diablo was dead because they destroyed Come his soulstone on that thing. Let all the bloody mm -hmm. heat out. This is the coldest night I can recall in these frozen wastes. So this is I'm three. I'm no chef, but I've managed the stew from what little food yeah. remains. This is, this is three, yourself. yep. And this is the final story I have to tell you. And you will need your strength to endure. This is the tale of the end of days. Well, I, I told you so, of the brave heroes that defeated Diablo and Bale, and of the destruction of the World Stone and Mount Ariot by Tyrael, the Archangel of Justice. In the aftermath, his essence dispersed, and though no angel had done so before, Tyrael was able to restore his form in the realm of Pandemonium. <laughs> After decades away, Tyrael returned to the High Heavens. There, he tried to convince his fellow members of the Angiris Council that they were meant to protect the innocent, and that the fate of humanity was pivotal to the future of the eternal conflict. However, they remained committed to their laws, leaving Tyrael no choice but to renounce his angelic nature, shedding his wings to embrace mortality before being cast out of the heavens. So he wanted to protect them, and they and were so like... so he fell willingly to sanctuary. The angels were like, nah. A shining star that landed in the ruins of Tristram Cathedral. New Tristram had established itself just outside the ruins of its predecessor. A thriving settlement, home to Deckard Cain and his young ward, Leah. She was the daughter of Adria, who had once lived in Tristram. The witch. And grew into a wise young woman. Who helped Aiden when he was Diablo. A group of adventurers from across Sanctuary set out to investigate the fallen star. Instead, they found a man who had lost his memory. In an effort to help this fallen stranger, Cain sent adventurers to recover the man's sword, broken and scattered in the surrounding lands. The quest would cost Deckard his life at the hands of Magda, the powerful leader of a fanatical coven devoted to Belial. With his last breath, Cain managed to repair the stranger's sword. In doing so, he repaired Tyrael's memory, as well as the Sword of Justice itself, Eldruin. For this deed, and for many, many more, I believe history will judge Deckard Cain amongst the greatest Haradrim representing the best of what the Haradric Order can be. His contributions to the Haradrim and to humanity cannot be overstated. The day he left us was a dark day for us all. In that moment of deep loss and grief, Leah was overcome by a dark power within herself. When the power burst free, it was strong enough to drive Magda away. This was the first sign that her destiny was cruelly marked by forces greater than any new. After Cain's death, so a really good dad, Leah strong dad, Trill had a really evil daughter. Him, where well, I guess them, they'll probably Belial clarify that, but yeah, the ruler of the probably region. Aiden, Never while he was possessed by Diablo, had a daughter with that witch, and that's her. Mm. And struck her down, avenging Cain's death. The heroes found another ally in Adria, Leah's mother. That's the witch. Who wanted to help her daughter contain the growing darkness. She helped them uncover the location of the Black Soul Stone, an extraordinary artifact created by the renegade Haradrim Zoltan Kool, which could trap multiple essences of both angel and demon, then permanently destroy them. Black Soul Stone in hand, they confronted Belial and revealed his great deception. Defeating him, they sealed him inside this soul stone prison. But 
as we have seen time and time again, evil is never idle. Asmodan, the Lord of Sin, had undertaken an audacious invasion of Sanctuary, seeking the Black Soulstone for himself. All the great evils save he and Diablo had been trapped in the Soulstone, giving Asmodan an opportunity to become the prime evil. His vast be demonic army erupted yeah, from I tuned Ariad out for crater, about the last minute. The scar left behind by oh, you thinking about? destruction. Really the party <laughs> hoped to aid the forces of Bastion's keep. The I mean, basically, forces. what's going on here? This Black Soul Stone is supposed to trap multiple souls of demons and angels, and they're trying to get all the demons into this one Black Soul Stone, given to them by Adrian the Witch. Who's they? The heroes of Diablo 3. As though the tide was turning in humanity's favor. But Adria had other plans. She had lied about the Black Soul Stone. Mm. Having used it to mark the souls of all seven great evils for containment, while leaving Diablo unbound. The witch then offered Leah, her own daughter, as a vessel for Diablo's return. An act she had planned since her child's conception. When Aiden sought solace with her in Tristram, Adria had already pledged herself to the Lord of Terror's service. Under the guise of her care, she used the prince's torment to her advantage, allowing Diablo to deepen his hold on the prince. When he left as the Dark Wanderer, so too did Adria. Soon after, she bore his child, Lear, whom she left in Chaldeum under a friend's care. So I guess some of Diablo's so essence must have been there with the sins. child, so it wasn't all destroyed no when they killed they that maybe. first soul stone in the... From the moment of her birth, Leah's fate was tied inextricably to Diablo, his essence part of her creation. Mm. With Adria's betrayal revealed, Diablo seized control of the Black Soul Stone, using it to channel the essences of all the Lords of Hell into himself. Brimming with power, he twisted Leah's body into a new horrific form. It's almost like the original seven-headed dragon. With his newfound strength, he set his eyes on a prize far greater than our world. The utter destruction of the High Heavens. With his Feels like that's a better power, plan. The Lord of yeah, Terror to go breached heaven. the diamond gates of the High Heavens. He single-handedly routed Imperius, leader of the Angiris Council, with barely a thought. The prime evil opened hell rifts inside the Silver City, unleashing the minions of the Burning Hells leaving him to continue towards the Crystal Isle. As demons ravaged the Silver City, the heroes came to Heaven's aid. They fought their way through hordes of demon kind, aiding the heavens where they could, and soon arrived atop the Silver Spire to battle Diablo himself. Against all odds, the prime evil was defeated, his essence trapped in the Black Soul Stone. Tyrael returned to the Angiris Council as a mortal, now embodying the aspect of wisdom. And for a moment, it seemed like Sanctuary might see peace. But, as you know well, peace does not last. All was not well with the High Heavens. Decades before Diablo's assault on the High Heavens, Malthiel had abandoned the Council, the Heavens, and his position as the aspect of wisdom. The ravages of the eternal conflict must have taken their toll on Malthael's mind. I often wonder what he saw that convinced him to forsake wisdom for death. Malthael had long desired an end to the eternal conflict, and finally saw his chance with Diablo's defeat. With the seven great evils gone, he turned his attention to humanity, but Malthael was not interested in winning our hearts and minds. His solution was far simpler far colder. To Malthael, humanity would never be more than demon spawn, and for the eternal conflict to reach its conclusion, all demon kind needed to be eradicated. But to achieve his ultimate goal, Malthael had to retrieve the Black Soul Stone, which was now in the hands of what remained of the Haradrim. I likely owe my life to Haradrim. In that first confrontation with Malthael, in the black tunnels of the tomb of Rakus, I faced death himself. As my brethren fell and died, I was protected behind a magical shield that Tyriel raised using his sword. When we emerged onto the city streets, we were met with horror beyond comprehension. Prize in hand, 
Malthaya and his reapers laid waste to Westmarch. The grisly slaughter I witnessed there nearly destroyed me. They were harvesting the souls of the people. With each death, Malthael grew more powerful. Malthael soon took the Black Soulstone to the Pandemonium Fortress, where he began to manipulate its power. Struggling to find where he had gone, the adventurers turned to the only person on Sanctuary who might know Malthael's location, the traitor Adria. Jeez, the witch, however, did not wish to cooperate and transformed into a terrifying monster, empowered by blood magic. Delivering final justice against Adria's betrayal, they struck down the abomination and set out for the Pandemonium Fortress to confront Malthael. By the time they arrived, it was too late. Malthael had already sent the Black Soul Stone to Sanctuary. My favorite part about all of this is that purpose. before we started the game, Terry I was like, do I need any context? And you're like, nah. <laughs> Being the spirits of their own king and leaders, the heroes well, became one with death. Let's finish this and then let's talk about what we've gained for this game. A great battle ensued, and in a last ditch effort to secure victory, Malthael shattered the Black Soul Stone great. to take on the power of the great evil still trapped inside. The heroes valiantly rallied in defense of Sanctuary, the power of the spirits within allowing them to defeat death itself. The aftermath of Malthael's use of the Black Soul Stone saw Tyrael gone from Sanctuary and countless dead. What happened to Diablo remains a mystery that haunts me. What about the other evils besides Diablo? I chose Solitude and Dale over futile efforts to bring light back into our world. But there are times, there. such as this, <laughs> where I feel hope struggling to take root once more. But to hope for salvation while doing nothing to attain it brings only ruin. I have learned this many times over. Judge a person by their actions, not their words. Wise advice. Lilith has returned. You sense the daughter of hatred in the growing shadows, as do I. I can no longer fight with steel and blood, but perhaps the knowledge I've shared will act as an armor in your own battle with the coming darkness. <clears throat> what I've done. Young scholar, wherever your path may lead you, I hope for your sake it leads down a what I've gained is understanding now, whenever they call Lilith the daughter of hatred, the mother of sanctuary, it means something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And the backstory. So everything... I think the backstory that really stuck with me was episode one. Yeah, the history, right? history. Like, how everything started, totally get it. As soon as we started going into the gameplay of game one, mm -hmm. okay, generally that little first concept, okay, I get that. Game two okay the good guy turned bad and then you are the good guys game three totally lost me yeah game three lost me a bit too when i actually played it mm. like after two and then playing three it felt super contrived the story i i didn't like it mm. like i liked the game but i didn't like the story i think the stories only make sense if you have some more context though yeah this context helps I guess I would say it just feels everything we're doing feels like a continuation of the angels and demons endlessly fighting each other. Uh -huh. It's like nothing ever dies. It's like, okay, we finally trapped all these demons in this black soul stone. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Then Malthael goes, destroys it. And now they're just off and it's like yeah. back to square one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like, so we never actually got anywhere here. It's just endless mm -hmm. recycling of this. Mm -hmm. But that is what it started with, with angels and demons doing that too so you know maybe that's the point and so now lilith but lilith it i seems... think they just need a better plan like if you're gonna trap something in a stone take the stone somewhere like take it back to heaven and put it in a yeah like lock it up there you don't just leave it on sanctuary and well then it turns it's gonna out that wouldn't have worked found. anyway because malthael left heaven and went and found the stone on earth and and he, he was the angel yeah so it wouldn't work holding it there Tyrael was keeping it himself i guess because he's like the good He's the best guy in all this. So then, um, so when the dad angel wanted to protect the kids. And Arius. And everyone was like, no, we don't care. So he's like, okay, I'm not an angel anymore. I'm going to just go be with them. No, that's, that's Tyrael. So the dad angel and Arius is, he, they never actually said how he got free from hell. The last we heard from him, hell took him 
and chained him up. But he's not chained up anymore now. So he, we didn't see how he got free from that situation. Why did that one guy want to be with the people then and give up being an angel if that wasn't the dad? Tyrael. Yeah. So Tyrael started as the Archangel of Justice. And I guess he just thought it, you, you shouldn't just create something and destroy it. Mm-hmm. And he cast a vote to save humanity and then kind of was was favoring the side of humanity all throughout. Mm-hmm. And then finally, eventually, the angel said, forget it. You're not even an angel anymore. You like them too much. Go be one of them. Mm-hmm. And so that's when he came down and became one of, the, one of them. But then mm-hmm. he rejoined the angelic council once, once the humans saved the angels from Diablo when he was invading heaven. Mm-hmm. He must have won some cred back mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know why Anaris wants to get back to heaven so badly. Heaven seems like kind of a shithole at this point. Um. Okay, so long story short, where are we today? I tell you. We're in the game. Yeah. And Lilith is back. Lilith came back. And it sounds like she has a plan to end all of this in some way, shape, or form. Sanctuary she... or the eternal fight? Uh, my guess would be the eternal fight because she wants humans to be, she wants her kids to be the only thing left. I think she mm-hmm. wants to end heaven, end hell, have her kids will be the only thing left. Mm-hmm. Which sounds like it would be on our side, but the problem is, is that, like, the way she... She's going about it a little goofy. Yeah. She has her kids, like, drinking each other's blood and stuff, so... Yeah. You know, eh. She had to sacrifice her own kids to get through. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's not It's not all that Maybe bright not. and sunshine. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, we'll continue on with Act 2, then. This was good context. Act 2? We completed Act One. Oh, and so now we'll... I thought you were saying there's a whole other series of these damn videos. No, this one's over. <laughs>